Yes, we do. I just hit uh, I just hit the record button, so we're good to go. Okay. All right. Good evening, everyone. Hello, Hi, Chris. Happy September first. Mm -hmm. It's actually been a beautiful day. Hopefully, the weather will last, and we won't go into another heat wave. But who mm -hmm. knows? <laughs> Um, so, uh, Peter, do you need a roll call? Are you all set? No, I can read the names right off of the um, screen, so I think we're, uh, we're good. Okay. All right. Uh, do we have minutes from our last meeting? We do not. Okay. So, I'm going to skip that. Let's go into old business. Uh, visitor map and kiosk. So, uh, we are nearing um, completion on the final layout uh, of the map. Um, I did get pricing from our previous vendor who had installed the Heritage uh, Walk uh, kiosks. The, um, since we're only ordering one, uh, the prices uh, reflect mm -hmm. that we're only building one. Um, and they are basically double what oh. they were when we oh. um, purchased them um, five years ago or however long that was. So the prices have doubled from 1100 roughly to uh, $2,165. Um, obviously, we wanted to keep, you know, the exact same materials, same, uh, same players who, who um, manufactured the panel as well as the uh, posts and the, uh, the base. Uh, but I just, before we made that uh, decision, I wanted to bring it in front of the commission uh, for a decision on the price. We do have a budget um, left over from the first time around. Uh, so it's, it's not a, an issue of, of breaking the budget, but it is a significant increase uh, in price. So Chris and I had talked um, a little while back and uh, we wanted to talk to the full uh, commission about the pricing of that. I'm also, we had also talked to Trinity Church at one point who was, uh, they were interested as well in, right. in uh, doing their own kiosk. They still have not made a decision. Uh, if we purchased two, um, the price value would probably go down a little bit. Um, it's because we're only building one and they're not gonna be setting up a production. Mm -hmm. uh, that's why the costs are uh, so much higher. So I wanted to um, have, have a conversation about that. Um, as I say, <clears throat> excuse me, Phil, and I are getting very close to finalizing the actual map uh, and the uh, business directory. Um, we are waiting for a couple of the other businesses to open. Um, and I think we're at that, at that point. Um, so just wanted to put that uh, on the table for conversation. Yeah. I mean, one of the things that I had said to Peter was because it is the business directory, does it have to be exactly the same material um, or could it be slightly different? And I was really just throwing that out um, as another option, but I don't know how do the rest of you feel? How much is left over from the budget from the last time? Oh, there's um, 30 to 40, somewhere in there, that thousand left. So it's, we're not even okay. anywhere near, uh, blowing out the budget so there's resources there but i just didn't want to make yeah. a decision double doubling the price without um mm -hmm. your your involvement and peter we would have to replace it how often do we think i would um, i mean i think if you look at recent history we've had businesses changing every year we did right. investigate whether there was some sort of a tape product or something we could put over and just adjust them, but uh, there really is no simple uh, solution. Um, just uh, for comparison purposes, it's not really the sign panel that's the big ticket item. It's the actual, you know, metal um, frame. frame that they sit on and the post. Um, the panel for the uh, uh, Washington Rochambeau to replace that panel was only $365. And by the way, that panel looks beautiful. Who did that one? Uh, that was, uh, I think, um, Fossil Graphics, which is a different company than the company that bid the last project for the Heritage Walk. 
Are we, so locked, are we locked into using that same company for any reason? It's a, no, it's, it's just a different, it's a different product. It isn't, um, as you saw, as durable as the one we ended up for the Heritage Walk. And it's attached in a different way to the right. frame. If you looked at the ones in front of uh, Lucky Lou's, uh, the WR3 panels, they're actually in a metal frame and they slide in. Mm -hmm. They're not anchored in there like these. These are actually countersunk from behind. So it's just a different different way of, um, of doing it. And um, so we were trying to respect you know what we did with the heritage walk and make them exactly the same so um, so, so the the major expense is not the panel itself you're saying it's the what's holding it so that should last right and then we would we would just need to replace the panel if that was necessary the only problem is it, it only we could probably go to a cheaper product because these are going to change out every year right. or two so um it might be something we it's worth Mm -hmm. you know, investigating what our other options are, or maybe putting it out there to other uh, manufacturers, uh, try and mimic it, and maybe we'll get a, a better price. Um, but how much would it be just to change out the panel? That's not going to be a major expense, is it? He, yes. didn't bid, he didn't oh, it bid it out. He did bid it out as a package. He didn't okay. pull out the individual items, so I can't really answer that. It's definitely going to probably be more than One a, of the reasons we went with that, that, type of panel was because it was going to last longer and wouldn't need to be replaced as often. So when we're talking about a business directory, Peter, why can't we just go with the same kind of frame that the Rochambeau is? If it's only going to cost us 350 bucks right. to replace the panel itself, mm -hmm. that actually is more accommodating to an ever-changing business directory. Right. It's also, the, it's also so the base that it sits on is, is completely different um than what we did with the heritage walk right. yeah um, where is that going to sit now is it going to sit over near village is that where we yeah there's a little island there okay so um, it's not really going to be right near any of the panels no so it's not like you're going to go oh look these are to to totally different things i don't i wouldn't have a problem and it does match what's right across the street right mm -hmm. right okay and not only that it, a business that business directory is going to change much right. more frequently than some of the other panels. Yeah, I think right. it's going to be every year, basically. Yeah. So it'd be a roughly a four hundred dollar uh, budget item each year that we would just have to cover and have it, um, you know, updated every every year as as businesses change. Yeah. And ask I, the businesses to contribute to the cost of changing the panel out. Yeah. Uh, Peter, I have a question. Is there any guarantee on the part of the business that's going to be do or the company that would be doing it that they would have the same frame and everything so that in three years when we want to change it, we don't, I mean, that they're still able to do the change out? Yeah, the one I just changed for the um, Washington Chambeau was basically, I think it was almost 10 years ago or eight years ago and that's the same so it was just a matter of ch slotting the panel back in again and it was very easy to change it out so um so that that has remained the same and i it's like a unit it's a universe it's a net what they call a national park service yeah. base right. so it's a pretty uniform standard um so if you wanted to have me price that i could uh it would be considerably it might even be below a thousand bucks. Yeah. Well, I would go with that. Yeah. I would, yeah. I, I vote for the same thing. Okay. Yeah. How about okay. if I make a motion that we go with the same company that did the Rochambeau Washington panel? Okay. I'll second, second it. All right. So we have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, aye. say aye. aye. We should have you raise your hands under reactions. Just wave oh, your hands. I'll oh. do aye because you can't see me. Right. Uh, any opposed? Hearing none, motion passes. Um, so as Peter was talking about, because that's the next item on the agenda. So if you haven't noticed, the Rochambeau panel has been replaced. It looks very nice. I did notice it, Peter. <laughs> <clears throat> Believe it or not, there was a typo. Oh, no. Oh, that I didn't see. Not in the new one, but in the oh. old one. 
Oh, <laughs> excellent. No. Good catch. Yeah, so that was interesting. It how got many missed. people noticed it? No, nobody. <laughs> shows, how, shows how what kind of attention people pay to details now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. <clears throat> All right, Sustainable Connecticut Certification. Congratulations, Peter. Well, don't congratulate me just yet. Uh -oh. I just I just submitted it, so I, they haven't really. I mean, it, it's 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 pretty much a, it's pretty yes. much a you know. But but you never know. So one, so I did I did file it last week. I met the deadline. However, they want me to revise uh, one of the. Um, what they call equity actions. In order to get the silver certification, which is what we're looking for, you have to provide three uh, equity projects that the community did. Uh, I did one on the, um, for the Wethersfield right Early now. Childhood Collaborative. They have a community messengers program. Uh, they didn't like yeah. exactly how I structured it. So they've given me until tomorrow to resubmit it. Um, so I'm working on that. And I should be able to resubmit that tomorrow, um, and then I think we'll be we'll be good. But they did uh, allow us an extra week um, to do that. So just just giving you an update on that. Good luck. So just and Peter, can you just give everybody a quick reminder? With that certification, we are eligible for additional funding. So they have a they have a, a community match program. Um, where you can apply for, I think it's a, basically a 50% uh, match. You have to do some local fundraising for the matching part of it, mm -hmm. and they have certain criteria uh, as to how you can match that. But uh, once we get the certification, uh, we'll probably have a conversation about projects that maybe we could pursue some funding for uh, going forward uh, down the road. Um, and uh, there is a project maybe on the latter part of the agenda that might be very suitable for that. So um, it does open up some funding for us, um, it, it, hopefully in the near future. They're not gonna make, make a decision, I think, until, until October. So maybe at that point, we can talk about that. That's great. Yeah, Peter worked really hard on that. <clears throat> and we bypassed the getting the bronze and went right for the silver. That's so right. that's great. Got to aim high. Okay, why not? Yeah. All right. Anything else under old business? All right. If not, let's move right into the EV charging station. Peter, you got a quote on that? I was I was approached by a an out of state uh, vehicle charging, and of course I didn't print it out. Um, we're sharing somebody's screen again. Charlie. Charlie, oh. you're sharing your screen. Sorry. Here we go. Here we go. Right. There you go. So as I was, in terms of, I, th I think in, uh, we've, we've talked about this before. We got some prices, I think, last year. Um, I think they were in the neighborhood of 12000 or something like that. So this uh, would uh, be a potential installation of a charging, electric vehicle charging station. We basically um, talk about putting it in the in the parking lot of the Keeney Center. The, the power would come from the Keeney building itself. Uh, I did meet with a guy out there, and it uh, looks like a pretty pretty much a no a no brainer uh, in terms of where we might put this. Um, and of course, I did not print out, uh, but I wanted to start that conversation again. This might be a perfect uh, sustainable CT matching yeah. fund <laughs> program. Because right now we do not have funding earmarked for this, but we might be able to uh, develop it as a community project um, since we have so few um, in the community. Um, it would kind of be a perfect match um, for that particular program. So that's primarily why I put it on the agenda yep. um, today to, to discuss. And I know we've talked about this before, but we just haven't been able to move that uh, forward in any way. Yeah, I can definitely see it bringing people down to Old Weathersfield because having an EV now myself, I know you have to look for places. And when I when we stopped on a, on trips, then we stop and we have lunch, and so people would definitely linger if they had a place to come and charge. And the charging, or is there a there's a charge for yes. the charge? 
yeah, they have to pay for it. Yeah, they were showing me they have an app. There's different vendors, but there's an app, and yeah. you you actually it gets charged to your account. Uh, so there's a bunch of different ways of doing it, and also you know the app shows if you do have an EV and you're driving around where they mm -hmm. where they are, so it right. automatically gets added to that national database because people are driving around. And he did show me um, how few there are here. Right. Um, I think a couple of the state buildings may have them, which I don't think yeah. are available to the public. Uh, Panera Bread has one. That's it. I, that, I think that's really, really it. So there's a, a clear gap here and um, would, I think, be a, a very appropriate project for us to pursue at some point yeah. in time. Yeah. Say how much this company would charge for installation. Actually, we, we, would, we would probably have the physical services department do a lot of the heavy lifting, you would have to bring in um, a, a, a qualified electrician who's certified in this because there's certain uh, adjustments and things like yeah. that that have to be made to this. He was explaining that to me. Um, so it would be a partnership um, between the town and uh, this particular vendor. So um, but I at least wanted to get the conversation going, see what you guys thought about this, and then we can mm -hmm. uh, consider how we might do this in, in the future. No, let's definitely pursue it. And yeah. you know, there might be other opportunities where um, there isn't a charge necessarily to the consumer, but I mean, people yeah, have to pay for gas. So having yeah. to pay to charge your vehicle isn't all that yeah. unusual. No, right. Peter, will it have two openings at that one station? Yeah, we were talking about a double. Good. So it would, okay. take, it would Good. Take, cover two parking spaces with one one mount. Mm -hmm. yep. Peter, so. did you um, look into control module in Enfield? I'm sorry, could you say that one more time? Yeah, did, can you, did you look into control module? It's a company that produces these, um, these stands in, in Enfield. Uh, I did talk to them originally. That was the original price we got last oh, year. Okay. Um, okay. This price is up quite a bit lower than that. Yeah, imagine we probably will, will have to um, put some sort of RFP or, I mean, I, I just wanted to get this conversation. We'll probably have to mm -hmm. bid it is really what yeah. I'm mm -hmm. right. saying. And, uh, but we probably want to have a, a pretty, uh, he, the guy was explaining to me, there are sort of entry level, you know, folks in the market and their uh, track record. Um, it shows that. <laughs> yeah, there's different levels of, of quality in the market. So if we put a specification together, we would want to make sure, you know, that it's uh, for, particularly for a public station, uh, rather than a private station, uh, we would want to make sure it's at the, uh, it's more durable. Um, he was explaining to me the things that can happen to these without a lot of, uh, even without a lot of wear and tear. So. Mm -hmm. So Peter, do you think Sustainable Connecticut might have some sample RFPs or specifications that we could tap into? That's a good, or, or they may point us to other communities that right. have done this and have gone through that. So if we can piggyback on somebody else's work, we would we would love to do that. Yeah. Good idea. I did, I did explain to this vendor that we would have to <laughs> probably have them resubmit a bid, but we wanted to at least get initial an initial conversation going. Yeah. Okay. Charlie, did you have a question? Uh, you started to say something? No, I just think it's a good idea. And my travels, I've seen a bunch of them, and I'm, I, I think it's, I think it's a worthwhile venture. Yeah. It's a wave of the future. Yep, it definitely mm -hmm. is. So, did you say what the cost was, Peter? I didn't get it written no, down. I, I forgot did. to print it out. Uh, okay. I'll, uh, I'll, I did get a proposal. What I'll do is after the meeting. I'll forward it to everybody. Okay. You have a, a you have the actual proposal. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. All right. Great. Um, Heritage Commission membership and appointments. Peter, we haven't gotten anywhere with this. <laughs> I think you're all illegally members of this organization right. based on this uh, on this agenda item. I think uh, they were supposed to have done this when they when they merged, and they still haven't done it. I've mentioned it several times to the manager, so. Um, it's like been a year, hasn't it? it mm -hmm. More. At more least. Than year, more than a year. I think right? it's so, two years. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so I just wanted to 
keep reminding. I, I don't know, Chris, maybe you want to reach out separately from the, to, to the manager. Um, yep. <clears throat> Although, you know, he didn't return my last phone call, so. Okay. <laughs> Don't, don't feel special. So. Does that okay. mean I won't feel special? <laughs> does that mean everything we've done for the last two years is wasted? No. No, because they have, they have to. Um, the rule is, if you're on the commission, your term expires. You're still on it until they reappoint somebody in your slot. Oh, that's right. right. That's yeah. right. Okay. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> so, okay. All right. Wayfinding signage program. Peter, we don't have any updates on that, so we can just skip that item. Well, it's just, I, I, we're at that point again. There's, um, there's a conversation about putting in some of the um, uh, public parking signs for the fire station and for, you know, to, in, the, in those, there were signs part of that program. Right, the directional signage. Right. I know the directional signage. And when we did the parking study, there was a renewed um, interest in getting those wayfinding signs installed, particularly at Main Street. And so it is, uh, it has raised its head again. As I said earlier, we do have um, some money. And uh, I can't guarantee that that money will just continue to sit there without somebody eyeballing right. it for another purpose. I think we just have to make a, a renewed effort to get that committee back and reprioritize which ones need to be installed and then at least uh, make the effort to spend the, the resources that we have um, because it has um, it has come up again in the community yeah. and people were asking me you know when are we going to do that so um, I know, but it's been on the bottom of your priority list with everything else you've been working on. Yeah, so. but I'm, I'm coming out of that cycle, so okay. um, I think it's it's time to get reactivate. Re I mean, re-activate. Bruce was okay with it. I think Mike was okay with it. it was Bruce, Mike, myself, and who somebody else? Yep. So okay. I, mean, I'll, Here, I have a question. Yep. <clears throat> Sorry. Uh, in the parking study. How many parking places were at the firehouse? Which, uh, at the firehouse? Um, it's only probably, don't quote me exactly, but roughly 30 parking spaces. Okay. Uh, the reason I ask is I went to the Charles the other night and parked in the, How many? In the fire station. How huh? uh, 30. 30, roughly. Okay, 30, I thought so. There are 13. The fire department has put up signs uh, all along the uh, south line and they also have in a couple of them destroyed cars and there were 13 I counted them 13 so we either have to change that uh, that whole parking plan or talk to the fire department well, the first order of business is to talk to the fire department. I think the cars are now gone as of today, because we have been after them to, uh, I, talked to I talked to Bryce from the Charles this morning about the whole situation. They've also- About the parking? Yeah, in there, in that lot specifically. Yeah. Um, and I've asked the manager- there, I thought that there were supposed to be 30, 30 spaces in there, and there's no way. As I say, there were 13. Yes, so the, the uh, fire department has kind of com commandeered a big, a bunch of them. I have talked to the manager and he has talked to the fire chief. So that is a, uh, an action that- Okay. So I'm just gonna yeah. have to, I'll, I'll bring it up to him again, let him know it came up today and hopefully that will get some movement because um, they don't even use those. No, they don't. And no. they don't need them. There's no. not that many fire. No. fire uh, yeah, how many respond to a call? Not that many. Yeah, right. right. Yeah, it's a little bit of a turf. Uh, yeah, turf yeah. war. Okay, okay, turf gotcha. War, which we're, we're but I was shocked. On. I was shocked because I remembered the number 30. <laughs> uh, on, on that note, on a related note, uh, there was a recent solicitation uh, for um, additional money through what they call the STEEP program, the Small Town Economic Assistance Program. Mm -hmm. um, we did talk to all of the property owners, uh, including uh, the Web Dean Stevens, about what would you think if we were to somehow be able to get some financing to consolidate all of that 
area back there, all of the private parking space, uh, parking lots, the fire station, and create a uh, more effective uh, parking lot back there. We got uh, general support for that. However, the uh, steep program was only giving out, um, normally they give out $500,000 for each project. They were only giving out 125 roughly. So we decided not to pursue that. But I wanted to be aware there is a, a conversation uh, and a, a conceptual plan is being worked on to take a look at all of those areas back there, see if we can improve upon uh, the available parking um, in a shared, as a shared resource for everybody. So um, is there concern about how to handle that when there are weddings? Uh, there will be many concerns about how to handle that, uh, not just about weddings, but the fire station and, yeah. and the restaurant. So it's just a beginning conversation. Because uh, we got lots of parking when there's no wedding, but when there's a yeah. wedding, we're, we're tight. Right. So um, but I just wanted to make you aware that there's that conversation. You guys will obviously be part of that as uh, if and when we decide to go forward. Uh, we thought the STEEP program was going to offer you know, the normal $500,000 and, you know, that, uh, but it, and it will be a costly project, which would require some significant uh, assistance from the state or from some other uh, entity in order for us to do it. And, and the reason to start it is the, apparently the, the, the uh, pavement in the fire headquarters parking lot is beginning to deteriorate. Uh, and just to redo that parking lot, it was almost $150,000. Uh, wow. We didn't want to invest that amount of money without maybe looking at the bigger, bigger, picture, bigger, huh? bigger yeah, solution. So it's a big It's a project. great idea, really. It's a great idea. It's just, yeah. there'd be things to consider. Right. Right. Although it's interesting on a side note that I've actually seen the parking behind the Keeney Center actually being utilized a lot this year compared to in the past when it was like, it was always empty. So... We've worked, pretty, we've worked very closely with Bryce at the Charles. I think if you open up his website now, there's a big banner that specifically uh, advises his uh, customers, you know, to walk, walk the few extra feet and save themselves right. a lot of aggravation by parking in the Keeney. Right. So hopefully that I continues. Have, I have seen signs on Center Street that yeah. say, please don't park here or whatever. It sounds very threatening, but... <laughs> I think they're asking for pub used public parking. Yeah, it's, it's great now because it's great now because the parking lot's not being used because the building is still closed. At some point, there will be a problem with, um, you know, an all-day conference at Keeney and all that. The staff shows up to work at Lucky Lou's and the Charles, and the lot is full. Right. Yeah, mm. we don't have to worry about that yet. We're gonna have to worry about it someday. Well, that's why we're looking at this other mm -hmm. parking lot as well. So. Sounds good. Yeah. Good work. Good. Okay, stakeholders meeting date. So we usually have a meeting with the stakeholders to talk about what's going on in the fall. Um, so let's see, we have Kate, we have, we have WDS, we have WHS. Uh, do we want to set a date, Peter? Do you want to doodle? Um, how do you want to handle this? Because it's coming up rapidly. Yes, it is. Um, Although I'm next, not sure how many events we're actually going to have. Well, the, we know the Scarecrows is going on, right? Yeah. Yes, mm -hmm. I saw the notice on that. Yep. So our next normal meeting is September 29th. If there's a way of um, squeezing it in between now and now and then, sometime in September. I, we normally, normally we do them on a Friday. We do a lunch Friday. Would it be a Zoom meeting or in person? Zoom? Um, Zoom's easy for me. Yeah, I think we'd, we could stick with Zoom. Yep, which may make it easier for people to make it. Mm -hmm. how, do you have, how do you have lunch on a Zoom meeting? <laughs> you bring, bring your own. own. It's a brown bag Zoom meeting. Oh, come on. <laughs> you can like even that. have a drink, Charlie. You can always <laughs> pick something up at a, at a takeout. There you go. Okay. Good idea. Curly looks way too comfortable for me. I don't, I don't know about the rest of you, but look at him. He's, I know. He's, he's like, relaxed. he's going to fall asleep on us. Give him time. He's going to fall asleep. Come on. Just I'm not going to start snoring. 
I'm not that old. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Peter. So, um, I'm really pressed for my Fridays already in September. Why don't you and I talk offline and see if we can find a date that works. How about the, 19th, the 18th? I will be at Lake George. Okay. Oh, good for you. Oh, boo -hoo. You could uh, you could zoom from the dock or from the boat or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, except they really don't want to. <laughs> there you go. Fair enough. I, I was expecting that answer. <laughs> um, and what about what's the following? We don't have to. We don't have to do it on a Friday. I mean, it's just been our past practice. But I know. All right, why don't you and I talk offline and see what okay. works. Okay. okay. All right, community photo contest. Mm. It's that time of year. Um, we were just going to go forward with the normal yep. um, standard practices. I think we adjusted some of the rules last year uh, after them being you know, pretty much the same for quite a while. So I just wanted to, before we did that, in case anyone had any strong uh, thoughts about changing any of the, you know, the details um, that we would uh, just start the process of advertising um, and, you know, establishing some deadlines and that kind of thing. So I just wanted to make sure before we went down that road that uh, nobody wanted to change anything up dramatically. Oh, that was nice that we actually got new pictures last time. Um, I one question. Um, what do you think about having the giving them a little bit more direction? I know our art, artistic is very nice, but to say um, pick a town building or a, a historic building or a home in whether so something that would be would speak more to visitors, you know, that would uh, bring people in and they'd say, oh, the Salastinos, I know that. Um, so it's identifiable, I guess. Mm -hmm. It has to be identifiable. That's I agree one of the criteria. I yeah, agree. Do it does know. seem I'm, like. Okay. Thank I you. I think each year we ought to have a theme. Oh, it's a no. good idea. I, I could because I agree because each year it, you're right, Carol. That is one of the criteria, but it seems like people are always missing that fact because each year when we meet you know, for so many photos we're saying, but you don't, how do you know this is Weathersfield? You don't know that this right. is Weathersfield. So obviously yeah. people are missing the mark year after year that that's yeah. a criteria. So and I get that, that point, that. but something I've always felt is like, we get some beautiful pictures of nature that people send that have been taken here. And granted, you don't see a building to identify, but if we wanted to put it out there, like on the Facebook page or in an advertisement or something that that's an, because that's a part of Weathersfield. You know, the trails are a part of Weathersfield, but just because you can't identify it, if we tell people in our, with our picture that it's Weathersfield, I just think there's some beautiful stuff that might draw a different crowd, a crowd that's coming for nature and not necessarily buildings. That's what if my you only don't thinking. What if you don't recognize it, but it's a beautiful shot, and then after everything has been awarded, they say, "Who? that's the Cape. You didn't realize that wasn't Weathersfield. Mm -hmm. I mean, th there's that to be said, right? A pretty yeah. dog, you know, against greenery. You really don't know what that is. I would, put, I would put bold type with the business about uh, uh, having something that's recognizable of Weathersfield. If they're not reading it, bold type it. And maybe they'll see it. Well, if, and what other nature, nature is, if there's a nature... Kids. Huh? Go. If there's Go a ahead. shot that doesn't have a building, a recognizable building, can't we label it at the bottom, the location of that, where that was? We like, could ask them to do, we, we could ask the photographer to stick a label on it and say what it is. Mm -hmm. That's a good, I think of the same thing, Carol. I, I, that's what we should do is require them to put something on their photo it's so easy now with technology. You can do that without any it, real But Charlie, you want it to be uniform so that it's the same font, the same correct on every picture. Yeah. So I would let the uh, person who builds the calendar do it. Well, when, okay. they, when they submit a picture, do they submit a, a submission form? Yes. 
So that we, ask, we do ask them to label it. Uh, most of them, you know, it, it, call it Cove Park at Sunset or, you know, they, they define it by the subject matter. Okay. It's usually not a problem, but occasionally there'll be one of those nature that you could, could be anywhere, but um, right. most of the time they're recognizable. Somebody needs to mute. Oh, are you hearing someone singing in my background here? Sorry. Yes, we are. <laughs> I have a little person. I was going to say in that form, uh, perhaps you could just add a line, nature of photographs need to be laid by a location. And I'm not opposed to you know, having a theme for any particular year either. I think that has some, some value, but it probably has to be a broad enough theme where it's not just one building or, you know, something mm. just too narrow that we're going to get all the same kind of thing. Like Weathersfield history. Yes. Yeah. yeah. It might be a thing to continue because I think the variety makes the um, – calendar unique so yes all right other thoughts Sorry, I missed that last before part. he finalizes this jesse were you going to say something yeah i missed that last part but um uh i was wondering about the community part of it uh did we talk about that at all um do we need that in the name Because I feel what like that scare that scares people, or uh, not scares, but misunderstands that people outside our community can come in and take pictures. Like it's only for the community. No, we haven't. We haven't had that problem. We've had many okay. photographers from outside of town um, participate, so we do not uh, exclude outside photographers, but we do um, specify that the, the images have to be of Weathersfield and in right. a Weathersfield location. So because a lot of times when I when I advertise it, I just say historic Weathersfield because because I don't want people to be thinking it's just a community thing. So I mean it's just the you know part of the name, that's all. Right. Good point. So Peter, if we if we make it a little more specific that they have to label nature shots and the buildings have to be um, recognizable, we should be okay, right? Yeah, that that's a minor. The, the right. form has has all of that stuff that we can easily adjust accordingly. So okay. Okay. Next. Good. Uh, promo ad opportunities, because we're at 542, so I'm conscious, I'm, I'm aware of time. Peter, we got, um, was it Visit New England who reached out to us with a proposal? Yeah, it's... Um, or an, an ask, anyways? Yep, yeah, Visit uh, New England. Uh, they're doing a fall foliage promotion, um, so they're asking if we would like to uh, participate. So they are, uh, they promote... Uh, all of New England. So they're trying to um, set up a state by state uh, fall foliage uh, blast. Um, so they're asking if we would like to take a display ad uh, in that effort. Um, we would, they have certain specifications. Unfortunately, the deadline is like tomorrow. I'm sure there's some uh -huh. flexibility. Um, and they'll run all of September and October. Yeah, uh, the cost is four hundred and fifty dollars. Um, a couple of the metrics, um, they'll do an e-blast, uh, which reaches two hundred thousand visit New England viewers. They'll do that twice. Um, they also have a Facebook page that reaches seventy-two thousand. Um, last year when they did this. Uh, there were 150,000 views. So clearly they're looking for something that has that fall uh, foliage feel. I think we have some ads that we've used in the past that have that fall foliage uh, imagery. So it might yes, not be do. that much of an effort for us to pull something together. However, the deadline is, you know, 
pretty much now. Um, well, knowing so the are we talking offer, about something like the rack card or, um, cause you're right. I mean, we've got a lot of fall foliage with the, the photo contest with, that we can use. Yes, we do. But the question, I, I, have we got the budget, Peter? The budget is not, not an issue. It's more of um, getting them something uh, in a timely manner that meets their um, it meets their uh, specific criteria in terms. I'm looking at the material request. It's a. I'm not. Yeah, I'll have to. I'll have to follow up with them. They get materials are 300 by 250 graphic. I'm assuming that's uh, the the image quality. Um, and it needs an offer invitation and a link. Um, so I think. Um, we probably have something that might just have to, the size might just have to be adjusted. We've done fall themed advertising in the past. Yep. And I'll bet you could this get that. all digital, right? I see Betty Standish is uh, out there. So I, I think yes. Betty has done some stuff with that theme for us in the past. We might just have to tweak it a little bit to meet the specific size uh, and quality imagery. Yeah, I could do that. Okay. I think it sounds like a very good uh, for four hundred and fifty dollars. And remember, people are home now. Right. <laughs> they're going to be reading the. They're going to be on Facebook. They're going to be uh, looking at all kinds of things. And a day trip is much more appealing than a long vacation someplace to a lot of people. Right. You are so right, Judy. This is the time to do that kind of thing. Yeah, I think we ought to rush and do it as much as we can, Peter. Okay. Uh, but I'm, Do I need a motion for that, Judy? Would you like to that's make my motion? motion? I think we ought to jump on this and spend the four hundred fifty dollars. Second. Um, yeah. All right, second that. Now we have a second from Kate already, but that thank you, Charlie. <laughs> I beat you, Charlie. <laughs> uh, so, any further discussion, Charlie? Uh, sorry, Peter. Just clarification. Visit New England is all digital. Yes. Yes, it's all online. Yeah. It's a uh, Facebook and a, a website. Yeah. Okay. All right. So Any other discussion for that? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Motion passes. Betty, if I can afford you the email that they sent me, and maybe you could um, reach out to their design people and see exactly what the quality they need. Roger. Okay, I'll, I'll do that after the meeting. Thank this you. Sounds like a sailor. <laughs> Thanks, Betty. <laughs> okay, moving into any other new business anybody has? Okay, um, so quickly going right down the list, uh, Judy Economic Development and Improvement Commission. You're on mute. All right, our last meeting was um, an update on projects that are going along. And, and um, I just noticed the other day that the Jordan Lane project, Peter, it looks at un unbelievable after new windows, yeah. the one on the corner of uh, Ridge Road and Jordan Lane. So that looks like it's moving right along. Um, but a lot of our discussions have been about self-storage moratorium. There is a um, proposal um, in, uh, um, uh, what is the committee? Uh, zone, planning, planning and zoning. Planning and zoning, to, yep. Yeah, to approve uh, or disapprove um, a revised uh, regulation about self storage um, facilities in Weathersfield. And the only that Peter talked about the steep grant that there's money from the um, state available, we have to match it. Um, so we talked a little bit about that. And then the last thing that I think is really significant is the salute to business, which usually is in December. So right. we're going to get started working on whatever it's going to be. Are we hoping that it might be in person? Uh, uh, I don't the, know. I don't think Chamber so. Chamber of Commerce, I mean, I'm sorry, the, oh. the country club is still limited to only 25 people. Oh. oh. So um, until that changes, it's unlikely. We've talked about, we're going to talk about what other options we might have, but we don't want to necessarily not do it, but um, maybe we'll change the date. 
uh, maybe we'll change. So we're looking at what those options, uh, there's yeah. still an interest in trying to do something. In doing it, yeah. Yeah. So that's about it. Unless Peter, you have something else um, that we should talk about? No, I think those are the big, um, no. big ticket items other than the okay. things that you see driving. Uh, I do have a suggestion for the um, salute to business. I thought of this the other day. Is River up and running with their, I haven't seen it yet, but their drive-in theater? No. Are they going to? Um, no. I'm not quite sure. He, no. he was pursuing a, a, a higher quality um, projection system that would allow him to uh, not just do older movies, but, but brand yeah. new re recent releases. So I don't know if he's got hung up on that or not. Is there a possibility to get a pop-up screen and have uh, people park in whatever parking lot is chosen and uh, do a salute to business that way? No. Maybe, yeah. And maybe if he does it before the, it's just a little cold at that time. Maybe but we cars talk. have heaters. True, true. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, bonfire sounds like a good idea. Okay. <laughs> and bonfire with some more instead of clapping. Necessity is the mother of invention. That's right. That's right. Yeah. So okay. Thanks, Judy. Uh, nobody from the shopkeepers, right? So. Jill. Yep. Well, things are moving along with Wethersfield Historical Society. Um, Amy is doing well, recovering from her surgery. She's not back in the office yet, but she does respond to some emails. Um, we, like a lot of other organizations, especially you know museums and entertainment venues, we've switched a lot of things to online. So right now we're doing a Wethersfield Historical Society virtual summer program, and it's pretty fun. We're doing a, moving a lot of things to video. So there are some scavenger hunts that people can participate in, and there's some pretty good video. So I would check it out, go online. I think Jesse's been doing a good job promoting that for us, so thank you. Um, so I would just say check it out. And two of the Keeney Cooler concerts so far have been recorded in our ballroom. And they're there for you to play back if you want to have it on in the background when you're working on something else. It's, um, it's nice to support those local bands. So that's pretty much it. Aren't you doing your, didn't you have one that you were planning on doing outside? Yeah, but it, it didn't come together with the town. Okay. We had to call it, you know. Okay. Right, thanks. Kate. Hello. Um, Hello. Well, pretty exciting. We got our temporary certificate of occupancy. So staff can now go in the building and start setting up. So that's pretty exciting. Um, we're still waiting for some last minute things to get done uh, before we can get a permanent one and invite the public in. But the building is amazing. So very excited about that. Um, we are moving our lecture series to the spring, so we'll see how that goes. But we are going to do Witches and Tombstones again this year, just with reduced numbers of people. Good, good, good. So, um, and we are, you know, we have been open and we have been getting guests. I think we had like 35 people um, this month since we've been open. So, you know, it's not huge numbers, but they're coming and they seem happy with the precautions we're taking. So yeah, we're happy to see people coming in. Sorry. Yeah. No, that's okay. No, I think it's it's just tough for everyone as things are opening up and a lot of it is people's comfort levels. Right, I was actually shocked because um, I personally, I don't think I would be going to museums right now and I shouldn't say that out loud, but um, I was shocked how many people, so instead I'm working at one <laughs> and getting exposed, but um, you know, we, we've kind of instituted a, our changed our tour a little so we could have one way routing and uh, you know, we have sanitizer in every building and everybody has to wear a mask and we're distancing. Um, and if, you know, like the Stevens house is really small. So 
we actually stand in the hallway and let them just go inside the door and we talk to them from there so that we're giving good distancing there. So it, it seems to be working. And then we, we do an hour between, we have a, an empty hour between tours. So the buildings get to air out a little bit. So yeah. it's working well. Good. It sounds good. I have one question. Yes. Why is your video not on? Because my camera's not working. I know you miss my beautiful face, Charlie, but. I do. I my camera's you. not working. So, so Kate, I will tell you, you have to go into your settings on your computer probably. Okay. And do an update to your video graphics software. Okay. That sounds like a plan. I'll see if I can do that before my next meeting at 730. Yeah. So if you do that, you may find that your camera works all of a sudden. It's okay. one of those updates that doesn't happen all automatically. You almost okay. have to go looking for it. So I'm looking for my video. It's your, it's some kind of video graphic software. Okay. 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 Thank you. All right. Um, okay. Any other reports from anybody? I think we caught everybody, right? Yes. Okay. Except yes. for Jesse. I was getting to Jesse. Yeah. <laughs> Jesse, you're up. Um, how's it going? Uh, I wanted to say good job Katie on the Fox 61 thing I saw that today oh, yes uh, that's very good that was really good I uh, uh, I forgot there was one part where you said um, people are you see people that are um, more like in in love with that with family and, and instead of like being all worried of what kind of like the flowers are going to be like that was pretty cool um, but besides that, uh, things are kind of, you know, slow uh, going with events and stuff like that. Uh, Scarecrows on Main is awesome. <laughs> so I'm going to go with that, you know, push that out a lot. Uh, I think we'll be getting a lot of responses from it. And uh, I will put that on Instagram, which will... Um, which will, I'm sure we'll get a lot of responses there as well. Um, I did make uh, a historic walk video on YouTube. Uh, please check that out. And um, I guess that's about it. Um, just sharing a lot of other people's stuff, a lot of Webby and Steven stuff and uh, historical society things. I'm just sharing uh, what's out there already. Thank you. Yes, it's yeah. appreciated. It's it's all I can do right now. There's really just it's, it's that's it. Uh, I got muted. Sorry about that. It's okay. <laughs> um, not sure if you heard that. I thought it sounded like someone fell down the stairs, but <laughs> yeah. I think so. I, I, I wasn't think every, sure if it was you or Kate. I didn't hear any. So I didn't, I I didn't hear any. Hmm. I didn't Which hear any child crying is that? after. <laughs> yeah. There's no crying after, so I think everybody's all right. Okay. <laughs> so. Uh, so, but yeah, uh, I guess that's that's about it. Okay, I think I think with COVID, there's just not a lot of activity going on. So the little bit that we have, the more we can promote it, the the better we are. Um, yeah. The other thing I just wanted to point out was it seems like Slip Away River Tours has been doing really well this year with yep. their first full year of operation. Oh, that's great. Yeah, and they brought a lot of traffic to the Cove Warehouse. So that's oh, nice. great. I've so. been pushing that on the newsletter and mm -hmm. uh, on Facebook a little bit too. You know, we got to work on a way to get people that take that cruise up into more of Old Weathersfield. Right. Charlie, we're waiting for you to pedal the bicycle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, didn't you offer to do the rickshaw? Yeah, I could manage probably 10 feet. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I might be late to the party on this one, but has anyone seen the Smithsonian Channel's um, Aerial America program? No, Episode no. four was um, a flyover of Wethersfield, like, you know, yeah. Connecticut. Yes, I, I saw that. Cool. Pretty neat, huh? Yes, absolutely. What, what was that again? There was a flyover at Weathersfield? Yeah, it's a it's Smithsonian Channel. They have a show called um, Aerial America. It's like a drone view of the country. And episode four was Connecticut, and they did go fly over Weathersfield. Oh, okay. Oh, very cool. 
you know, people are stuck on watching the backlog of stuff, catching up. I'm one of them. Speaking <laughs> of actually uh, uh, the tourism stuff, um, actually, I just, so I did just get an email. I haven't responded yet, but from um, the Connecticut Office of Tourism, and they're asking and wondering about the annual uh, scarecrows along Maine. So maybe they'll do, they're going to do a little piece on it or something like that. That's the um, CT or visit CT site, mm -hmm. yep. Great. Which, is, which is a huge, huge website. Uh, I'll obviously respond to this and hopefully they'll do something about it. That'd be great. Do I'm a little piece on when it. You, when you respond, you might want to see, see who's head of the shopkeepers. Is it Larissa? Is it Meg? It's not Megan, right? No, she's gone. She's oh, gone. Yeah. Dana, maybe Dana Spicer is probably the person for the one sending me stuff. Yeah, at All the right, moment. So I was going to say, just CC Dana so they have someone if they want more information to reach out to. Okay. Because they're the ones sponsoring it and putting it on. Right. Perfect. Are they doing Christmas doors this year? Haven't heard anything yet. I haven't either. How about holidays on Maine? I think that's probably unlikely, uh, okay. but I, I don't know if I've heard anything officially. No one's reached out to me right. about the barn. So at this point, I would say probably not. Probably not. Well, I think Wait. everyone's been so worried about whether you can do anything because of COVID. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. But the that's doors would be nice. That. That's a huge number of people, very close quarters. It sure is. That barn is packed. But if they did the doors, it would be sort of like the uh, scarecrows on Main, mm -hmm. because people could just do it by themselves. Right. right. Would that be any suggestion we could offer to the shopkeepers or something else they might do with the same format as the scarecrows? I, I think their issue is with, um, with, uh, Megan gone. She was kind of a, you know, tornado oh, yeah. of activities. Uh, I think we, if we might volunteer to help, if possible, for things like that now, they were debating doing the scarecrows even because they just wow. didn't have the same level of volunteerism that they've had in the past. So like, it, like other organizations, they have a challenge getting people to organize and run things. So mm -hmm. I'd, I'd be happy to reach out, but I would probably only do that if we would maybe agree to somewhat help if possible. So wasn't Holidays on Maine put on by the chamber though? Yeah. Yeah, it was. It was. No, I was yeah, talking about the, the door, door contest was the shopkeepers, right? Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. So Jesse, in your next newsletter, could you maybe put a little blurb about, you know, if you've got time because you're working remotely or what have you, maybe reach out to some of the local organizations and see if you could give them an hour or two of time. Something about volunteering. Do you know what I mean? It's not a bad idea. Yeah. Good idea. Yeah. Which reminds me, um, now that I'm back up in the great state of Connecticut, I'm available to assist in certain projects. Okay. So are you back just for the season or are you back permanently? Well, tell, based on COVID, what's the season? Yeah, good point. I have no idea when I'm going back at this point. Okay. Right. And Florida is not the place you want to be right now. No. no. Stay safe. Stay they're, here. They're fine. I don't know what your problem is. They're, they're, everything is fine there. There's no COVID. There's no emergency. That's right. Let's open it all up. <laughs> what are you smoking? <laughs> Same thing as the governor down there. <laughs> yeah. You're absolutely right, Chris. God. All right. All right. Any other business? No. Um, can I just say something? Um, yes. This is Betty. Uh, so we have an art show going on at the end of September from the 29th to October 11th. It's a uh, 
um, competition show. So there's $5,000 worth of uh, awards being given out. Mm -hmm. And it's being held at Circa on Main, uh, Melinda Robidoux's place. Um, yeah, it's preceded by two openings, one for the public and one private uh, with a dinner at the um, at Jill's place <laughs> in the ballroom. Right. So, um, yeah, it should be, it's going to be on our website. Um, Jesse's going to put it up also. Um, I just want to mention that. <laughs> so yeah, we are hard. also having the other event around it is we're hoping to do an art and jazz thing. The jazz part would be outside, um, nice. probably on private property. It could be at the academy. I don't know. We, uh, Mark is in charge of that. I, we're conferencing about it. But that's October 3rd. If we could piggyback with another event, that would be great. But it would probably be late afternoon dusk type of thing where people could bring a picnic dinner would be outside jazz. Just thought I mentioned that. Nice, oh, great. Yeah. No, that is good. And thank you, Betty, because I should have asked you what's going on at the Academy. My bad. Oh, it's okay. Sorry. Um, I have one other thing that I just want to mention because I think we need to mention it. I, I took that boat tour. We went down the um, Connecticut River. I don't know the guy's name. I forget the guy's name, but he, he taught us how to drive a boat basically which i failed at miserably but um captain morgan oh captain morgan, morgan yeah that's him right yes so um, Love that captain morgan. Oh, right so one of the very 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 obvious things and because i live here on the cove it's very even more obvious is that there is a millefori problem around the cove i talked yeah. to kathy bagley about it and um there's no um effort uh, the town isn't really doing going to do anything about it and it, it's invasive it's horribly invasive and it is catching all kinds of debris it doesn't look good um, for visiting boats to see all this stuff so Betty, I what, excuse me Betty what what is it it's the problem it's a milliflory it's a invasive plant that comes in on boats Yes, I know, what, I know what it is. Right. You, 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 cannot, you cannot miss it. You go down to the cove and you'll see it. it's all green all around the edge. So I think it's going to be, have to be a, um, I'm sorry to bring this up. This is like a negative, but I, I think we need to address it. And I have a feeling it's going to have to be like a local, like the garden clubs and everybody else. And I think the, we don't want to put poison chemicals on it to kill it. No, no, no. I think we need to rake it up. So, you know, it's a big, huge effort whatever gets done and um you okay. know i'm going to talk to my neighbors about it can i make a suggestion yes i i'm two people should contact that are interested in doing something about this uh the park and rec department who is that cove is one of their facilities i know that's, that. that's number one and i'm sure you've probably already done that the other is the harbor master the new harbor master um he is interested in that and you might also get support from the connecticut river conservancy conservancy group they are very active in cleaning up the river once a year we have cleanup projects um and that's something that i think they would be interested in and and get involved in who is the harbor master now his name is Mike, uh, oh, come on, come on. I got to look it up. I can give it to you. Okay. Is he at, at the Yacht Club? He's also a member of the Yacht Club, yes. Okay. But you reach Hi. him through Park and Rec. Okay, thank you. Betty, did, uh, did Kathy Bagley say why they weren't going to do anything about it? No, she did not. I, okay. I asked her a simple question of, are they doing anything about it? And she said, she asked around and no, but she will keep looking. Okay. Jim Woodworth uh, and the yeah. folks from the yeah. Great Meadows Conservation Trust have indicated that he's been organizing a group of people to go out in, in kayaks uh, on the river. Um, so maybe if we just simply point that out to him. Um, maybe he's already got that planned at some point. Yes, he has a huge group. That, yes that, um, we could that's call probably them. the logical 
group who right. would just volunteer to do it. And I know the area, right. it's right by the boat launch there. Right. Yep. right. So did, did Peter, I have what? another question in relation to that, because this is a huge issue across the state, actually. Do we have a washing station at the cove where people can wash off their hulls before they go in the water and when they come out? Negative. And is that something we should put on the wish list? Good luck, but yes. <laughs> um, yeah, it's very, I don't, I don't know how to resolve it. Um, my daughter who's here from New York City actually um, got, is in touch with two scientists, one in, at UConn and one at Wesleyan. And one of them is gonna come out and take a look and make some suggestions. So, um, it, 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 you, you, there's an inventory going on right now of the entire Connecticut, lower Connecticut River watershed. Uh, so there's a, there's a grant that was set aside. So, so this has been identified. It's just a matter of organizing the volunteers who have the training. There's a specific way of removing right. um, the invasives so that they don't come back. Um, and I think Jim and his group have gone through that training. Right. So I think he's probably the person. Yeah. If you want okay. to mention, if you want to reach out to him, I'll reach out to him, you know, okay. by getting a couple of people to follow up with him, it'll probably get some attention. Right. Yeah. Thank you, Peter. Yep. Okay. All right. Great. All right. Any other business? All right. Hearing none, I will uh, move for adjournment and uh, we will get back to you with a date for a stakeholders meeting, hopefully in September. And otherwise, we will see you at the end of September for another Zoom meeting, unless you want to meet outside somewhere. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Okay. Good night, Bye. everybody. Bye. 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 Thanks for coming. Thank you. Bye. -bye. Bye.